What is up, everybody? It is Monday morning, and we are going to do what we do every Monday morning now, which is go over the T3 TrueNOS Tech Talk podcast that was released on Friday. This is the Virtualization Recap AI Coding Comparison Slog Over Visioning TrueNOS Tech Talk episode 34. Let's scroll down here and look at the overview of the timeline and look at the first topic of the day, which is Microsoft's Patch Tuesday actually matters, who's affected and what's the fix. The first three minutes or so are going to cover what happened for Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. If you're unfamiliar with Patch Tuesday, it's when Microsoft tends to dump a whole lot of patches into the Windows operating system. So their updates are very interesting in the way they do it. They don't usually test them first very extensively because they break a lot of things. And in this case, they broke something pretty important for TrueNAS users, which is rare. The thing that they broke is Active Directory works and how that affects people using TrueNAS. So if you're using TrueNAS, chances are you're not using Active Directory. It talk about the fact that there are patches coming shortly. So even before I think 25.04.2, there may be an interim patch in the next week or so that is going to address this issue because the people that are using it, again, are probably enterprise people. And this broke something very serious for them. If Active Directory breaks and you're using Active Directory, your users are not going to be able to access what they should access. That's a big problem if you're having everybody work off a share drive that now nobody can get to anymore. That's a big, big deal. So there should be some patches coming shortly, but that's kind of the TLDR of what happened with Patch Tuesday where they broke the way that, well, I shouldn't say broke, they changed the way that the interface is going to work on the code level with Active Directory. Now TrueNOS has to adapt to what Microsoft did without any prior announcement. So they're gonna go ahead and re release a patch that's gonna fix that and everything going forward after that patch is going to incorporate it. Jumping down a little bit lower, is 25.10 the end of Incus on TrueNest. This is kind of an interesting topic of conversation. It only ran for about two minutes, as you see here by the timestamps. And I think that actually deserves a little bit more discussion. Now, again, they talk about a whole bunch of things after that, but it's not really Incus related. When we jump over to the latest announcements here, you'll see here that in 25.04.2 nightly, uh, the classic virtualization is available. This is the thread from that talking about classic virtualization. I'm going to give you guys kind of some information on what is and what is going to happen, what is and is not going to happen according to the Chris's themselves. So originally we thought, hey, this is going to live side by side for a while. And it turns out that they're going to say, hey, it's not going to, it's going to live side by side for a while, but then it's going to kind of go away in terms of Incus. So in the next version of TrueNOS, which is 25.04.2, there's going to, they're going to live side by side and they're going to call that classic virtualization. And if you're familiar with electric eel and you were on electric eel you know that the virtualization was its own tab and then when we went to fangtooth it became instances using incus as a middleware to control kvm and qemu so that didn't go so hot uh, if anyone's ever tried to migrate a virtual machine from electric eel to fangtooth you probably know exactly what i'm talking about if you're trying to use virtual machines or containers and backup volumes like zvols or take snapshots just in case you break something that's not easy to do or even available on the ui of Bang too. So there's a lot of things that were kind of left open that could have probably been better. TrueNAS IX has acknowledged this and they said, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to let both these systems exist simultaneously. On 25.04.2, which comes out at the end of this month in about two weeks, from that point, Incus is going to continue to exist. So if you're on Fang2, you can keep using that. And we're going to bring back the virtualization that we were using on Electric Eel. So if you have a virtual machines from Electric Eel, you can migrate them cleanly into Fangtooth because it's going to stay on the same type of virtualization. That's amazing. But of course, people's question was, hey, what's going to happen in 25.10? That's the next update of TrueNOS. 25.04.2 should be the last version without, you know, accounting for minor patches like 25.04.2.1, like little minor things like that, what they call hot fixes or hot patches. Besides that, the next release should be 25.10. And what's going to happen to Incus then? And it turns out that based on this post, based on the virtualization recap here in the video, Incus is not going to be used anymore. TrueNOS is going to migrate away from Incus back to KVM QEMU using their own middleware or whatever middleware they're using before on Electric Eel. But they're going to keep containers, which is interesting because containers right now are managed by the Incus middleware, they're going to go to something else. And they're promising us that right now an Incus container, like I do, I run my Proxmox backup server through an Incus container, that when I go to 25.10, there's going to be an automatic migration of my current Incus container PBS to something, whatever they're going to use for 25.10 to control LXCs. So LXCs are not going away. Incus is no longer going to be used as the middleware to control them and there's gonna be an automatic migration they build to make that happen. So this is right now what is being talked about in terms of 
what the future looks like for Incus and what virtualization looks like. The long and the short of it is virtualization is going to continue to exist. It's going to look more like Electric Eel with the addition of LXCs. I think that probably should have been the way it was starting on 25.04 anyway, and they tried to use Incus, which, no, wrong, Incus is amazing, but Incus is this whole thing. And that's one of the things they talked about on this was like, hey, it, especially in the forum post here, you'll see some of these guys, like Captain Morgan, for example, uh, talks about the fact that Inc. is just a huge project that they were not prepared to dive into the depths of, and that was the big problem with it. It's not that there's anything wrong with Inc. It's not that it doesn't work. It's that it's going to take a long, much longer time than originally anticipated to fully integrate that with Trinus in a way it's going to work for the users, and that's just not working right now. They're going to step that back and go to a different system to allow virtualization to go forward with the least amount of pain. So if you're on Electric Eel right now, and if anyone is trying to do virtualization going forward, virtualization will only work going forward in 25.04.2 using the classic way. In other words, if you try to create an Incus VM starting at 25.04.2, that's not a possibility. They don't want that. The idea is that you shouldn't be using Incus anymore in 25.04.2 unless you're already using it because they're going to be moving away from it. So if you're thinking about starting Incus containers or Incus virtual machines in 25.04.2 at the end of July, don't. That's just a, a big warning for you guys. Come in here and read these posts on the TrueNOS forums. Next we see here that the, the transition is for the functionality first, tool set second. This kind of led from the virtualization conversation from 708 all the way down here to probably this, this whole section of this down to 16 minutes. Again, this is talking about virtualization, but at the same time, it's talking about what TrueNOS is and what TrueNOS isn't. The idea is TrueNOS is gonna do things under the hood and we should accept what the controls are in the UI. They're strongly discouraging the use of the CLI because the CLI could break stuff. And they're basically saying, hey, you can use this if you know what you're do doing. Don't just copy and paste commands from the internet. You don't understand what's going on. Don't start using the CLI if you don't understand what's going on in the middleware, if you don't understand what's going on underneath the hood of TrueNOS, because you can tune something and break it. And one of the other things they talk about is, hey, if you start coming onto the forums and asking for help and you've modified your TrueNOS instance in a way using something like dev tools, the first thing they're going to ask you to do is, and first thing they're going to ask you is, does this work when your modifications aren't turned on? Because if it does, then they're not going to help you. TrueNOS is not going to take the time to try and figure out, or IX for that matter, how many different ways you've changed your system and then try to help you in that change. They only work with the system that they ship. So when we start doing things under the hood in the CLI and using dev tools to modify, that breaks it in a way that is not TrueNOS's fault. It's not IX system's fault. It's not their problem. Their encouragement here in this huge block of time is saying, hey, be careful, use the UI tools because that's what's not going to break. The UI tools are tested to the nines to make sure that no matter what you do, and what buttons you press, we're not gonna break something unintentionally. So stick with the UI and just try and use UI. If you're going into the command line, that's fine. The recommendation was, hey, let us do it, let IX systems do what they're gonna do to fix Incus and to migrate things in and out and keep just using the UI and the UI buttons. Do not try to go underneath the hood using the CLI to try and manipulate these virtual machines in a way because it's cause it's going to cause more problems than it's worth and they're moving away from it anyway. After this, the discussion goes more towards AI. So you'll see here AI feedback and questions, local hardware limits, this whole section here, everything AI going all the way down to probably here. So from 17 minutes to 32 minutes, very large block of discussion all about AI and where it is right now. They're evaluating, the Chris is basically saying, hey, here's what we like and don't like. Long story short, they like Claude right now. Claude Code is the number one thing. And you'll see that here, Claude Code fourth Opus is winning currently. Gemini is interesting because they mentioned that Gemini is basically learning from the code that people are putting in to make itself better. And they're giving away a lot of their features for free by using that information that you put in there to mine it for information. So they had an interesting point about Gemini. It could be one of these up and coming things that actually eventually jumps over Claude code because Gemini is basically letting you use, use it completely without any type of payment at all. And what you're what you're paying with is your data. This is interesting from Google's point of view and from the user's point of view. From Google's point of view, you're gonna get a lot more users trying to do a lot more complex things because it's free. You don't have to charge, you're not charging people for that. And from Google's point of view, by doing that, now they get to learn and teach their AI with probably far more data and probably far more complex data. Claude Code right now is winning at this very moment. It could change very shortly, but they do a whole piece on AI and where it is now for coding. So if you're a person that writes code regularly, this is probably a good section for you to come back and listen to. The user question that's addressed here is for, it's called slog over provisioning. And this has to do with a slog drive that you might add, which is used for simultaneous and continuous writes. The problem with that is the slog drives were limited at one point because you were only have to, able to go up to a certain size. And if you added like a two terabyte slog drive, only so many gigabytes of that would be recognized. So they go into the ins and outs of why slog is like that and how to go about fixing and doing things. 
there is no show next week. They're going on vacation. So next Monday, there, well, next Friday there will be no show. And next Monday there will be no recap because there's no show. But that was pretty much it for today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you want to have a very deep discussion about one of these things, go ahead and jump on our Discord, the Servers at Home Discord. Please take a look at Discord. We've been making some changes lately and talking about the wiki, talking about new roles, things that we're just expanding the Discord with. We did our first live stage the other day to talk about uh, some media management and some download clients. There's a lot more going on in Discord than there was before, so I encourage you to jump over there if you're not already a part of our Discord. There's a lot happening, a lot of sh exciting changes. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you want to thank me personally, please buy me a coffee.